Have you just got your cockatiel or want to learn a little bit more about how to look after them? Then this is the video for you. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I am David and today I'm going to be talking about cockatiels and how to look after them. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to like this video, subscribe and comment. It does help the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because it will alert you if any new content comes out. Now cockatiels are probably my favourite type of small parrot, I absolutely love them, they're so full of personality and they're also a very very common pet. So it would be really awesome I thought to do an updated version of my cockatiel care guide so you guys can have all the up to date information, everything I've learned recently and just basically have a full picture of how to look after them if you just got one or want to improve how you look after them. But I thought I'd start with a little bit about these guys' natural history because it's kind of important when you're looking into their diet and their behaviour. These little fellas are from Australia predominantly and they live a nomadic lifestyle in large flocks going where there's basically water sources and food sources because where they live is kind of scarce so they need to move around an awful lot. That means they're kind of opportunistic feeders and you may have seen those news reports where Australian crops are getting totally devastated by huge flocks of these cute little guys. Not so good for the farmers, although some of the footage is quite interesting to watch. Now in the wild, these guys will eat some seed, they'll eat grains, they will eat bugs, they will eat some fruit, they will eat veggies, they can get their beaks on it. They will also eat sprouts and semi-sprouted seeds. A lot of the time they will prefer that and I'm mentioning this now because it's kind of important when I talk about their diet later on. Leading neatly on, let's start with diet. So in the home environment, we can provide them an excellent diet. We can give them all sorts of lovely things. And that doesn't mean you should be feeding them nothing but seed. Because if you go back to my previous point of natural history, they will eat a wide variety of things in the diet. A lot of people say, oh, they're ground feeders. They eat nothing but seeds. It's not true. They eat loads of things. You can even provide them some types of bug to increase their nutrient profile. So when we're feeding them at home, I highly recommend a nice diverse diet with lots of different things. For our cockatiels, for example, we'll provide them lots of fruit, um, fresh um, vegetables, a little bit of fruits they're not as keen. We'll provide them sprouted items, because again, in the wild, those are highly sought after. Soaked items, and maybe a little bit of grain sprinkled on. Later on as well, we will also provide them some fresh herbs and then some dried items. So they will get some of their seeds, they will get some of their dried grains, they will get some freeze dried items, maybe some spices, herbs, etc., and flowers, because those can be very good for them. It's just having lots of diversity in their diet is very helpful. And I've got lots of videos on diet, which you can explore if you want to learn a little bit more. You may ask, where's the pellets? Well, generally, we don't recommend feeding pellets. I will leave a video specifically on that topic now for you to explore. You can provide some in their diet, but it really shouldn't be the predominant part of their diet, honestly. It should be as diverse and mixed as possible because in the wild, they'll be scavenging, getting whatever they can just to survive. In the home environment, we can go one up and provide them much better. So with cockatiel's diet, we don't recommend cooked foods. You should be staying away from human foods. You should be staying away from anything like that because they're not really adapted like us for cooked foods and if you cook the food and leave it warm it can lead to hormonal problems because it simulates regurgitated food. Also don't forget with your cockatiel they are a small parrot so you want to be portioning your food correctly and also if you can weighing them regularly to get a good baseline and to know what sort of weight they're maintaining and if there's any problems there. Generally with a small parrot you want to give them one tablespoon Per meal per bird. So for example for ours again we would provide them one tablespoon of fresh in the morning and one tablespoon of dried in the evening and, and then maybe a bit of extra foraging and this can be variable depending on the parrot but that's just a nice guideline to help you get a good idea of how much you should be giving them. Now we've covered diet let's talk about their cage setup. Now cockatiels despite being a small parrot need plenty of space in their cage. You can't just put them in a small cage you want loads of space. Think of it as their bedroom, you want a nice spacious bedroom which is well furnished and has lots of great things to do in it. So that in a cockatiel's bedroom would mean stainless steel bowls nice and high up so they feel safe, lots of perching options, natural perching options high up in the cage and down below, not just using dowels, not just using plastic toys, removing bells and unsafe items, got a video on dangerous toys you can watch now, it's lots of fun interesting items in there. You can provide a substrate base to encourage their natural behavior to forage and even if you don't I would highly recommend having a foraging tray down there so you can encourage their natural ground feeding behaviors in a constructive way. I would recommend loads of chewable toys, things they can really get their beak into and I'm not talking about plastic or hardwood, I'm talking about yucca, palm leaf, balsa, even cardboard and paper homemade toys are completely fine. 
because if your cockatiel can't chew through it, they're probably gonna get bored of it and it's not gonna be as fun. They love to chew, they love to destroy. It's much better they're doing it on toys rather than your furniture or your wallpaper. And just think of it as that bedroom analogy, because the more you think of it that way, generally the better you're going to equip it. Two other quick points on a cockatiel's cages. If you're getting a big cage, make sure the bar spacing is appropriate. They've got only tiny little heads and they can get through and get stuck. And utilize the whole cage space. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they don't need a big cage, they only use the top. And they, that's another reason for not substrate on the floor. All of our parrots love going on the floor purely because we taught them how to do it. So have loads of stuff all throughout the cage. Encourage them to explore it through training and let them enjoy the whole space because then they can get a lot more enrichment from just being in there. And if you have to go out for work, they're gonna be more satisfied because they're having lots of fun in there. Another thing that's important to mention when we're talking about cage setup is the amount of sleep your cockatiel gets. Now cockatiels generally need 12 hours opportunity to sleep every night. Now I say opportunity because both in the wild and in the home, they may not be able to sleep for that entire period. But there's two important reasons for this. The first one is your cockatiel needs that amount of sleep to avoid being grumpy. Just like with us humans, if we get less than our eight hours, it's not ideal for us. For cockatiels and most parrots, that 12 hours is a good benchmark. The second and probably most important reason is their sleep cycle is tied into the light cycle and when they tend to get less sleep, it tricks their bodies into thinking it's summer, which leads to hormonal problems. So if you're keeping a fairly consistent 12 hours of sleep, it tends to reduce these sorts of issues. Let's talk a little bit about cockatiel's behavior and traits now, because that will help you prepare for your cockatiel if you're just getting one, or if you have one already and you're like, what's going on here? it will help you get to know them a little bit better. I've got loads of videos on cockatiel behavior. I will leave a card for one right now. It is well worth exploring what their little sounds and behaviors mean. So just to start off with, let's talk about their little cheat code. And that is their crest. Their crest on top of their head is a great cheat code for their whole like, entire family of their um, species. It's very interesting and useful because that will give you a good indicator of how your cockatiel is feeling, especially in the context of their general body language. For example, a high up crest, really high up and skinny, means they're probably nervous or alert. A uh, slick down crest means they're focused on something or also could mean they're scary. Scared? Scary? Scared? And if it's somewhere in the middle, it generally means they're content or just curious. Now, cockatiels have two other very important traits I feel everyone should be aware of. The first one of these is they're prone to night frights. A night fright is basically where your cockatiel gets scared in the middle of the night due to a sound, a movement, something sets them off and they flap around their cage frantically. This can often lead to a lot of stress for your cockatiel, can lead to injuries, knocked out feathers, all sorts of things. And it's really important to know what to do when this happens. Again, I have videos on this topic, but I'm gonna talk about it now because it's so important. Generally, when a cockatiel has a night fright, the best thing to do is come into the room calmly, turn on the light, don't leave it off, go over to them and like quiet them down, talk to them gently, softly, so they start to calm down. Do not let them out, do not get them further stressed, and do not leave that light off. You need to be present and you need to be visible. Also, when you're doing it, make sure you're checking them for injuries, because it can be they've grazed themselves or hurt themselves, and you can sort of like look after them, make sure they're okay. Once they've calmed down, then potentially you can get them out and check them further, but it's very important to give them that time. Preventing night frights can be difficult, but there are steps you can take. One thing is having a night light in their room. The other is ensuring there's nothing to be shifting in the middle of the night. And the other one leading neatly onto my next topic is the working on desensitization training. Because cockatiels, another trait, are quite neophobic, they're quite skittish, they can be very nervous birds. So if we can get them used to different things through desensitization training, you know, like rewarding them for calm, um, basically get them used to new things, it will pay dividends. And you can do that through targeting, just for rewarding them for being calm around new things, introducing them to new things, and generally just getting them, get them adaptable to change, and we can do this through training. One other really important trait to keep in mind about cockatiels is they are powdery down birds, which means they use dust to keep their feathers in nice, good condition. That means it can be irritating to us, it can even be irritating to other parrots. So if you have any allergies, that's something to keep in mind. One thing that's absolutely essential and really helpful is having an air purifier. We have a huge one, which we are recommending and absolutely love. We also have examples on my Amazon store if you want to look at the sort of, sort of thing you should be buying. But an air purifier makes things a lot easier on us as humans and our parrots. So do keep that in mind if you're getting a cockatiel. 
Couple other things on cockatiel behaviour, males tend to be the ones who display and sing, whereas females will not. Females tend to be slightly quieter. Some people say that all cockatiels can be quiet and there's like, oh yeah, get a cockatiel because it's quiet. That's not true. They can be exceptionally noisy, including females. You will get quiet ones, you will get noisy ones. It's based on the individual personalities. Also, don't forget your cockatiel is part of a giant flock species. They're used to being around lots of other cockatiels. So we generally recommend you keep them in pairs at least. However, if you do have a solo cockatiel, that is okay. But you need to put in that extra work. You need to be that person who provides your cockatiel their companionship, their bonding. You can't just leave them in the cage and expect them to get on with it. You need to put in extra work and effort, and that can be done through training and foraging, which we'll talk about right now. If we go back to cockatiels natural history, you may have heard me say they like to forage on the ground, they decimate crops. We can simulate that at home without the decimation. You can just provide foraging trays and activities for them to encourage their natural behavior. That could be a substrate base in the cage, a foraging tray, which is basically just, could be a paper plate with some uh, sprinkled on treats, and some um, substrate on top of it, which could be shredded paper, whatever. And that just allows them to get this natural behavior out of their system. It keeps them busy, keeps them entertained, it stimulates them, it's good exercise, and it's lots of fun for them. I recommend foraging for almost all parrots because they spend 50 to 70% of their time in the wild doing so. So do keep that in mind when you have your cockatiel, foraging is going to be very useful. You also need to provide other activities for your cockatiel, and you may say to me, oh, my cockatiel doesn't want to play with its toys. Well, you can do that through the decent work and through training. My top training tip for any parrot is target training. It just involves getting your parrot to touch the end of a stick lightly, could be a chopstick, could be anything, for a reward. This gives you a clear line of communication with your parrot. You know what they want, you know what you want them to do, which is touching the stick. They know what they have to do is touch the end of the stick. It removes hands, it's, it's just very useful. It can help you redirect biting behaviors. It can help you direct them to points of interest. It can raise their confidence. It's such a simple thing. It can have so many applications. So if you do one training exercise out of this video, targeting would be the one I recommend. Other sorts of training methods that I feel are really useful for cockatiels is flight training and recall. These guys like to fly, that's why we don't really recommend wing clipping much. They enjoy it and it can be quite rewarding for us to have them fly to us and fly away and station. It's a very simple process. I think I've run out of cards, so I do have a video on that on my channel if you can um, search for it, it's really good. And they just love it. And for these guys, you'll see them often flying around the room and then coming back to me when I ask them most of the time anyway, and they're very, very good and really enjoy it. Now, we normally recommend two to three training sessions a day for these little guys, and that's for most parrot species. They don't have to be long, so don't get worried. We normally say between one and five minutes. So you can just do it quickly before you go to work, or you can do it when you get home in the evening if you're very busy. But that training, consistently done, will yield great results. It also works with bonding if your cockatiel is new to your home, and it just helps them out lots. I love doing training with these guys. I've trained them all sorts of things. Chip knows all sorts of tricks and Fish learn his tricks by watching Chip. And it's just really enjoyable for both them and me. Stimulating for them, it's stimulating for me. So I'd highly recommend doing lots of training with your cockatiel. So just to round this guide off, I thought I'd do a little summary. You want them on a great diet. You want a nice big cage. You want to do lots of training work, find lots of opportunities to play and have fun. These guys will live for a very long time if cared for right, and I think that's absolutely awesome. So they are a commitment, but they're a really rewarding one. So please keep that in mind, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to hear from you. If you have any tips about how to look after these little fellas, I would like to hear that as well, because it's always nice to learn from other owners. But in the meantime, if I can get Mr. Fish on my hand, I will leave you guys to it. Take care and have a really nice day.